Shemash, you're just grenade. Hey, how's it going, Mr. Welch? How are you doing? Oh, doing good. Just, uh, bleeding my brains out trying to get a book together that's 21 pages short. Oh, boy, oh boy. Well, I want to tell you guys, uh, or tell you, sir, that you are live currently to my channel, uh, a modest channel, 25,000 subscribers, and it is a YouTube channel that has spent many years playing roguelikes and other interesting games, and more recently has delved into the wonderful world of tabletop of yesteryear, and um, I was given your channel to view some time ago on the subject of Twilight 2000, and I've since watched everything you have put out. So I wanted to spend some time at the end of my normal Saturday broadcast talking about tabletop and letting you have some room and spamming the shit out of your channel where I've been sending people for the past few weeks, if not month, because I think small channels need to stick the fuck together. I appreciate that, because about, I guess, two weeks ago, they all showed up at the same time. <laughs> no worries, brother. No worries. We're on this shit together. So, I have a few questions for you, Mr. Welch. Uh, once again, I have some people in my chat, actually, uh, have dropped your channel, and will probably drop it a few more times. So, I was going to ask, of all the tabletop games you have played, which stands out the greatest? I know you love Mistara. You have a whole series on Mistara, which is really in-depth, but do you intend to touch on anything else? At least with that uh, level yeah, of love. I plan to do a bunch of stuff uh i still have to get back to my riffs review which i put off i think the last four months uh -huh. and after that there's uh doing mech, the mech warrior review there's renegade legion which was a messed up game uh and just everything i can find uh everything that i can find on my shelf well yeah i mean some people have told me that there's no way someone could play this many tabletop games and i said you are certainly mistaken you seem like someone who comes across as someone who's played all of these games and in great detail. Are you familiar with the Mr. Welch list? I am certainly familiar with the Mr. Welch list. Okay, because that's where I got started back in 84, and that's when I started writing down all the stuff I got told to stop doing. So yeah, I've actually played everything, and I can, I've can i got my Dungeon Masters and my Game Masters and my Storytellers and my Marshals and whatever they called the... Uh, person that handled the Camarilla, they'll all vouch. And I just kept playing games because it was better than, you know, not doing anything. Well, of course, of course. And people of a certain generation, I mean, tabletop was everything. It was everything. And there's no eclipsing that, really. No, I grew up before real video games. I mean, there was no there was no consoles to play. You know, like I wasn't allowed really to play sports because the only thing I was really good at was hockey, and I live in Houston. Yeah, and that's that's, that's a little difficult to say the least. Um, so tell me, what is the best and worst tabletop setting you've you've ever had? And I, okay. I do a lot of interviews. Mind you, uh, for things like Space Station 13 and really weird roguelikes, yeah. but this is, I, I have nothing prepared for this interview. I'm just really fascinated because I'm a, That's I, fun. I, I'm a net okay. weird of the same era. Okay, let me think. Best games, love the Star Wars D6 just because it was so well written. It agreed. Absolutely agreed. Blew everything away. Uh, love Spunk 2020, but that was because Mike Pondsmith got me hooked, um, kind of personally. Uh, just grabbed me out of the blue at a convention because I needed somebody for a table. Um, then loved Paranoia. Uh, I think I still hold the record for the most number of deaths when I was running Paranoia at uh, Alcon. Then uh, Call of Cthulhu, fantastic. Don't get too attached to your character. I mean, these well, are all not. really well written. Uh, don't mix Paranoia and Call of Cthulhu, however, because I think we killed almost 500 characters in four hours. Yeah, that's that's kind of. I mean, last time I played Paranoia, I, I think we killed about twenty characters in about thirty minutes. I mean, it was it was just brutal. Like, oh well, that's traitor, bang, and it was just yeah, one after another, which was really funny because we were trying to trip each other up on words, you know. I think the funniest one we had we lost 72 characters in the prologue because their mission was to turn off a skipping record. And this was the way they call it Cthulhu crossover. And the record was skipping on the word Haster. Oh, okay. 
So, yeah, that's when they realized that this was not going to be their normal game, especially when they got shot by the Death Star in self-defense. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, worst games. Uh, I'm not going to say Fatal, because everybody always says Fatal, and nobody's it, ever actually played Fatal. It, yeah, exactly. Everyone says Fatal, everyone's read the rule book and had some laughs, and, oh, roll anal circumference, and all that bullshit. Yeah. But no one's ever sat down to play it, because it's one of those games that... Despite being, um, despite having supposedly a full rule book, I think would be quasi unplayable because it's very sloppily put together. Yes, um, bad ones. I have to admit that I really wanted to like the Iron Kingdoms RPG by Privateer Press. Right. Uh, it was incomplete. It plateaued. You went up. You went up in your levels, but every level to be what you had to raise, and. You would raise, if you're going to be a, a sniper, you would start off with all your stats maxed out, and then you have to gain 20 levels before you get any better at being a sniper. Uh, it was really stifling, and all of my players stopped. I think we, we it died before they got to the second tier in three straight campaigns, and we just shelved the book. Yeah, I found Iron Kingdoms interesting, um, but the the Magitek bullshit... I, I think Magitek is bullshit, personally, but... Um, I, while I love like War Machine and yeah. Hordes, I couldn't wrap my head around a RPG set in that world because it seemed kind of stamped in in iron. You know, you couldn't change the world. Right. It also had serious rules problems. We had one guy playing a Cador sniper, and he wanted to test the long range rules, which was a minus five to hit. Oh well, yeah. But, well, I remember if you if you built a Cador sniper correctly, you could more or less just say I kill the guy, and yeah. you do from five boards away. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this was this was the kind of guy that would put a long tom and a an omni mech and just stand 20, 20 sheets away, blowing people away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, so there was a problem with that one. Uh, the new Seventh Sea. Oh my God, that was another game I really liked in first edition. They went to second edition, and yet fail. You roll to see how many successes you get, and then you dictate how well you do by studying your successes. But they are successes. You cannot fail. Um, and the players got bored with it because there's no challenge. Um, so that one was a problem, and they, I think the the problems finally killed the John Wick game line because I forgot who bought it. But uh, yeah, it's it's a dead and go, dead and gone game. It now, pretty. now here's my question with Twilight 2000. Um, I've played maybe an hour of it, and we all got murdered trying to find MREs because. As I'm sure you know with Twilight 2000, the danger is in the small things so that a symbol ambush turns into murder very quickly. Yeah. Where no one has enough medical equipment or complete kit and you build your tactical mall ninja ass-kicking machine. And then you run out of ammunition two battles later. Yeah, you, you run out of ammo, then you run out of medical supplies, and then shit gets infected and you die. Um... Because no one's going to take care of you. There's no infrastructure or anything else. It's it's pretty much the worst post-apocalyptic setting you can imagine. Yeah, um, strangely, the most realistic. Oh yeah, no, I I know people yeah. who like fucking swear by uh, swear by it. Do you have any interesting anecdotes of Twilight Two Thousand in your time playing? Uh, yeah, we had a bunch. The uh, one don't let the person who uh, what's the best way to put it. Don't let the guy that thinks he knows how to do everything do it if he really doesn't. Mm. Um, we had one guy that was playing the the super soldier. The you know the uh, I think this was two point back when everybody before they fixed the the problem with the the stat points when you're level up so you're not all 80th level or 80 years old when you get out of the Marine Corps. Oh yeah, you know, just be like, I'm a Marine. I'm gonna kill you with a hammer. You know, yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But he was still able to kill you with the hammer because the longer you stayed in, the better you were. Mm. Uh, they they nipped that in the bud. But uh, we had the people that thought that just because they were the super specialists, they could do everything, and they they weren't having all skills. So you know, somebody dive in and forget that he's fully kitted out. Get one guy playing a uh, 
I think it, I think it was my character, uh, the the Coast Guardy. Like we had a Coastie, and he was a senior chief petty officer. And just every time somebody took it off out, we tried to start start singing the Oompa Loompa song because <laughs> he would always do it through some. You know, what do you do when you cut the wrong wire? You get a face full of steel and your body's on fire. <laughs> Um, <laughs> someone asked um, you know, like... <laughs> someone asked uh, what do you think about the aftermath RPG what they, they said the aftermath RPG or about I aftermath am, RPG I am not familiar with that one neither oh, am I that's that's why I'm like well because I've played a lot of role playing games um, one of the ones I was going to ask if you intended to follow up on is I'm sure as you know, um, when when D and D slowly started squeezing out of the Gygaxian uh, neck beardish uh, grognard era and started getting slowly accepted into mainstream, past demonic panic era, yeah, you you start getting um, Warhammer Fantasy role play came yeah. on and and Warhammer Fantasy role play is so fucking good. At least in my remembrance of it, because it yeah. was detailed, it was in depth, it was beautiful, and all this wonderful, crazy detail, like exchange systems for money and all of these crazy things. Like you're in a dark world, everyone's fucking miserable, everything's fucking hard, um, your job sucks. If you want to qualify for a job or a role, you had to have all the prerequisites for it, which can yeah. be very, very difficult. And God help you if you use magic. God help you. Yeah, they 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 really punished you if you screwed up that one. Yeah, the second edition was really fucking good, but I, I yeah. was wondering if you wanted to touch on that in the future because I think that would be fascinating. I think yeah, you have a gift I'd love for to. it. I mean, they stole a lot of the mechanics for the uh, the the forty k RPG. At least Fantasy Flight did. Oh yeah, Fantasy Flight lifted D one hundred and ninety percent of the mechanics from straight yeah. from it. When I saw it, I had a distinct ping of nostalgia and then anger. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I will admit I did like the, the 40k uh, RPG. I mean, I played I played Warhammer Fantasy not recently. Uh, I just remember one of the guys was playing a rat catcher. Oh yeah, and he lasted about one combat. Um, and yeah, because it was you know the 40k or the for, the Warhammer Fantasy universe was just so well written. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's um, Holy Roman Empire, but with some really interesting flavoring changes, and yeah. all the towns have so many adventure hooks. Oh, the children yeah. have disappeared on the third of the week uh, for ten yeah. weeks now, and you know you had to. It was just neat things to you go into the woods and die. Yeah, and it's like you you were never as you were never big, good enough to take down the big stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I mean the big stuff was scary. The woods were scary. It made you fear the night, and that's one thing that I thought White Wolf turning... never did well was make you fear the night. Yeah, and it was uh, you know there's always the chance of you ha you would run into something that would the only solution is run fast. Yeah, like run fast is. Good, absolutely good. Uh, I mean, in okay. So yeah. here's here's a real question. Here's a real, real question, and I, I think this is going to earn you some big points or earn you some hate on your channel. <laughs> Cyberpunk twenty twenty or Shadowrun? Cyberpunk twenty twenty. Why? I like I like Shadowrun. It's a very good game. They do the meta better than anyone else, mm. uh, any RPG, but. From a personal standpoint, or from my personal taste, I like the hard feel of cyberpunk. Yeah, the like blood and chrome, smoke the, and chrome. The blood sorta. and the chrome, the, you know, like, I'm going to put on a cyber arm. Is this going to drive me insane? Uh, you know, no matter where you are, you're just one bad headshot away from a new character. Um, you know, yeah, cyberpunk is mechanically flawed. Shadowrun did it a little bit better, except for fourth. Yeah, we liked fourth. Yeah, um, Cyber had a lot of flaws, but it also was pretty well written. Um, and they gave it a kind of a, a stagnation, so people could get into the game without having to go back and read all of the, you know, the catching up on the setting. You know, Cyberpunk started at twenty twenty, it ended at twenty twenty, and then they went to third edition, and nobody wants to talk about that. 
Um, do you think uh, that? Well, do you think that Cyberpunk 2020 is going to evolve once this new game comes out, Cyberpunk 2077? Do you think that they're going to do a simple slap a new label on a commemorative edition, or do you think that that might result in yeah. some renaissance? I, I think Pond Smith is smart enough to know what he did wrong with third and what he did wrong with second. Um, second was it wasn't a bad game. It had some bad rules. You iron that out. You, um, you know, you update it. One problem was is Cyberpunk. The the most ironic thing of everything is Cyberpunk 2020 did not envision the future right. It didn't ex expect us to all be walking around with computers in our hands. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And the same um, thing is like, have you ever read the um, forward written for Neuromancer? He wrote it in like 2005. Yeah. God. Uh, right. Michael Pondsmith. I haven't read Neuromancer since the 80s. That's fine. That's fine. It, yeah. It's just when he wrote uh, Gibson. Um, yeah. It, when, when he wrote Neuromancer in the foreword, he said, uh, there's a part in, in the book where an AI is calling someone and it starts calling a series of pay phones as he walks by it. And he realizes, oh, God, what a future I thought in the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Who, who would have thought that pay phones would disappear in 20 years? Yeah, actually, I was writing a uh, dark future RPG years ago, and uh, the computer hackers were called the Gibsonites. That's beautiful. That was, cool. that was a great RPG. Unfortunately, um, somebody paid us a lot of money for the uh, game mechanics, and we never saw what happened to it. That can Ten happen. Billion. Ten billion possible starting characters. Rough. Yeah, no, it was uh, the entire character generation to go off because I was really proud of this. Character generation was 10 questions with 10 answers. And you pick, the first question was something like, where are you from? And you would pick where you were from and it, you would give you stat bonuses and skill increase. And you do it 10 times. So at the 10th question, you answered everything. You filled out your character. You got all your stats. You got all your skills. And um, you're ready to play. And it was 10th to the 10th power, 10 billion. That's pretty awesome. It's so a template overlay system. I like that idea. And speaking of madness and character creation, one more thing I have to suggest, and I, I, I think that a lot of people are going to back me up on this because chat is probably going to explode when I say this, but let's talk about Traveler. <laughs> oh, no. Old Traveler, Mega Traveler, Traveler New Era. Listen, when you, you did yeah. an amazing episode... You did an amazing episode. I, I, when people come over to my house and they said, hey, check this out on YouTube, check that out on YouTube, I, I show them my favorite stuff, which is never shit from my channel. I, I, yeah. I want to show them stuff I've discovered. Yeah. And because, as you know, YouTube just tries to show you garbage. But I, I found your channel through a friend, and he showed me your knowledge of 82,000. And I said, good God, yeah. this, this guy knows his shit. And so I watched your D and D series where you break down all 10 D and D settings. Why, what, yeah. when, why, what, when, why, what, when really rapid fire. I yeah. beg you, sir. I beg you to do that for traveler because I oh, think man. that would, that would turn so many people onto it who are just overwhelmed. Which one do I play? Do I play GURPS? Do I play mega traveler? You know, I'll have to find some books for that because uh, I stopped. I played Traveler. God, was I know what Challenge magazine I picked up to play. It was 72. So whenever Challenge 72 came up, that's when I was playing Traveler. Yeah. The, what well, Traveler is just... It's the only game I know of where you can die in character, Jen. And... Um, it sticks out for that reason because you could create characters with a background that made fucking sense. Like, yeah. why is my character a salty fuck? Well, he's disabled from his military service and his yeah. legs are broken and he's also yeah. taken a bunch of chances in his life and this made him sort of a crazy chance taker. And yeah, I mean, Traveler has kind of evolved. The original Traveler. There was some mechanical. You could die in. You could die during character generation, and that was, you know, that was part of the risk. Um, there were a few others that you could, but you had to work at dying in, in Cyberpunk for the character generation, or just get really unlucky. Um, 
you know, the, the following of the traveler and the timeline. That's another thing you'd have to you'd have to keep up with. Because that was, you know, do you do it after? Was it the computer virus killed everybody? Yeah. The traveler Dark Ages? Well, yeah. I mean, and that's the problem is that as every group took ownership of Traveler, they kind of put their own imprint on it. But I, I think at yeah. core, what makes Traveler Traveler is not the setting and its fluff, but more the crunch of the game. Yeah. You know, it's because GW had their... Oh, granted, GW kind of wised up and turned everything into the same mechanics the with the turn system. Oh, I agree. By the way, um, one, of, one of the people in the Black Pants Legion, um, my group, has uh, suggested that they could get you all of the versions of Traveler and make it available. Yeah, must fit in wunderbar. Yeah, das ist gut. So, um, what... It, it's okay. What you, you seem to hate riffs, and I have to ask about that because I, I know people who love riffs, but the people who love riffs yeah. also, when they see a van with like a wizard driving a Trans Am on it in traffic, yeah. think that that's fucking great. <laughs> so I want to know what you what you hate about riffs. Kevin Symbia has no concept of balance. Okay, you've got. I mean, you, you can start off and you can play a scout where you're a human scout, but you've got your pistol or your knife. Yeah. And you join the party and you're really good at scouting. And the guy standing next to you is a glitter boy or there's a juicer. And the juicer happens to be half God. Um, and I'm sitting there looking at the books going, okay, where did I go wrong? What did I, you know, where did I, you know, I, I could have taken a rail gun or I could, you know, be a, have a good turn to the entire enemy army into a puree. You know, at the expense of having a shortened lifespan, unless you take half God, in which case you completely negate that. Um, I mean, Rifts is famous for having just dumb rules. Well, uh, you, know, you know, mixing uh, and matching everything. You know, mega damage. And, uh, yeah. Yes. You know, it's like if you're trying to, if you're, you know, if, you, if you're in your power armor and you're facing somebody who doesn't can do that. You know, trying to fight somebody in power armor, you don't have a mega damage weapon. You're basically pillow fighting a battleship. Yeah. And if the players aren't no, I, ready I agree for with that, you. That's it's it was so badly balanced. So here's here's some other questions I have. Um, have you any experience with Cinnabar? Oh yeah, yeah, with the uh, with the uh, fire breathing clam, the, the flying fire breathing clam. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Um, uh, I read it once. We we kind of put it down and never looked back because it was just like, okay, somebody had a little, you know, somebody had all this extra money and they printed this. You know, it was, it, it's, it's like fatal in the, a lot of people have read it and nobody's played it. That's the thing is I, I did actually read Cinnabar all the way through and I I wrote down things I wanted to read up on later, and the one that I underlined I remember was Where Storms, and I couldn't wrap my head around it. And having DM'd a lot, I I wondered how I would manage to say Where Storms to a player and have them not have their head explode. Yeah, I'd have to say, yeah. I mean, it was like. I, I kind of put that in the category. What was the other ones? Um, Hours and Perils, if you're familiar with that one. Uh, going way back to Avalon Hill trying to write an RPG. I uh, I am actually not familiar with that. I, I, I'm not going to um, lie. Yeah, Avalon Hill does not have a good record with RPGs. Hours and Perils was the get out the graphing calculator. We're making characters. Oh, God. Um, you know, like any, you know, like okay, add this, add this, add this, add this stat, and add this stat. Now to get your base mountaineering stat, take the square root of those two stats added together. Um, so wow. we just played D and D because we didn't have to use graphing calculators. It's um, it falls into the, my nice try lousy execution. And unfortunately, there's a lot of games I have on that list. I, all right. Speaking of nice try, lousy execution. Uh, I'm I'm gonna read off a list, and if if you can, 
if you can, I, I I want you to just give me because once again, I I'm not a I'm not a huge channel, but I I have a wonderful collection of strange dorks, and they sure. they absolutely I think would love your channel. So here okay. here's where you can vest fully your dorkness, sir. Okay. All right. One one sentence or one paragraph between the sentence and a paragraph. Give me your response to the following. Um, Cyborg Commando. Old school. Mm. I remember that a long time ago. What was the good and bad about it? Uh, it was on sale. The bad was I couldn't find any players. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, Dead Earth. I've only seen that on the shelf. Never touched. Yeah. All right. Uh, Empire of Satanus. I haven't heard of that one. It, 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 it's it's a Derek Dishaw, and it's fucking horrible. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. It, here, here's the next one. And, and this is going to earn you so many subscribers or so okay. much fucking hate. So I need okay. you to... Un if you're a drinking man or a smoking man, now's the time. But here here's the ultimate question. We're going to go okay. through editions of D&D. &D. All right. Very quickly, best and worst aspects of it. Sure. All right. Uh, first edition. First edition. The worst aspect is they put too many rules into it. They had uh, you, you had random charts for everything, and you didn't need to go that far. Uh, best best aspect of it was it was well written as far as well designed. Mm. You know, it, it lured people in before they noticed that you had to roll for you know parasitic and uh, uh, para, was it parasitic disease on page seven. Yeah, uh, I agree, but I also think that comes from uh, chainmail. You know, where, yeah. where chainmail was a medieval battle game and not a role playing game, and so it carried over all those effects they tried to mix into that. Yeah. And that was it was that that show that's originally a war game. Oh, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, uh, it's kind of like how Necromunda did with versus. Yeah, well, it, it's contemporaries. Okay, next second edition or glorious AD and D. Yes, um, second edition. The biggest strength was is it cleaned a lot of the well the aforementioned charts. The downside was is it was part of the. Uh, the, the death spiral of TSR and it started to show towards the end because that was when Williams was just cranking out crap. I agree to pay bills. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, side effect. Thacko devil or saint. Uh, it was a product of its time. It was very much part of the war game. Uh, they could have explained it so much better. Agreed. Third edition. Strength of third edition is it gave us a a, a freedom that the first that first and second edition do. So if you wanted to play a halfling paladin, that was fine. The you know you could mix and match stuff. Third edition's biggest problem is uh, they added well 3.0, not 3.5. 3.0 there was serious rules flaws, especially with things like the ranger where everything was front loaded. If you're talking 3.5, the biggest problem was they added one rule too many. What what would you say is they, fucked in three three five? If you had to rewrite three five, what 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 would you eliminate? Uh, stop putting out so much stuff. Oh, I mean, my God, the, yeah. You you know, if I were to put all the the 3.5 official books, they they released on the same table, the table would collapse in on its own gravity. That's that's fair. I mean, uh, you, you got Book of Vile Darkness, which is hilarious, but then you also got Manual of the Planes, yeah. the Planar Handbook, and all of these yeah. other things that really touch yeah. on the same subject. And they, a yeah. lot of that is is Monty Cook and accessories. Yeah. And Monty Cook loved his, uh, his spellcasters. Uh, yeah. I mean, a Monty Cook game is Sorcerers and Wizards and whoever their lame friends are. Yeah, it's kind of we we saw that when we tried to play Numenera before we put it down and never touched it again. Yeah, we're gonna touch on that. So, okay. <laughs> so okay, um, fourth edition, and I, I I understand you're going to want to drink and spit and anger. Yeah, but it, let's let's because no. okay. 
I can I've ranted about fourth edition. I yeah. describe fourth edition as fourth edition is D and D for people who clap when friends comes on. Yes. Um, fourth edition was a board game. Correct. It, it, it shoots at lighters meets D and D. It was a pretty board game. Agreed. But it was it was still very much a board game. Yeah. It. it makes me so sad that they got uh, Greenwood and several others to play it and be like, isn't this fun? Action point! And all of that. Did other... my check clear? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, not make a, it's not make a character check. It's did my check clear? Yes. Um, the same same thing with Lawrence Olivier starring in Inchon when they asked him, why are you bringing such a crap move? And he goes, for the money, dear boy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty goddamn much. All right, so here's where you're gonna get some anger or some love. There is a lot of shit said about 5th edition because Critical Role and many other places, I've discussed Critical Role in the past, and I said I'm, I'm very happy about new people coming into the game because if it's the same old grognards and neckbeards it dies and yeah. and when you I'm sure as you well know when there is that one group in every uh, role playing um, society or that one group in every tabletop store or one group in every game store that is always the same people doing always the same roles doing always the same stories it just stagnates and eats itself but yeah. The question is, is is D&D mainstream now, or is this just a bunch of tourists? What is your opinion on 5th edition? And here, I don't care how long you speak. I want to hear okay. your thoughts. 5th edition, oh, this is going to be... Let me get the doc, my doctorate real quick. Oh, please. Um, <laughs> please put on your mortar board, drink your bourbon, sir. 5th yeah. edition... I mean, fifth edition was a reaction to the fourth edition, and I agree. third edition's overcomplication. Mm -hmm. So they were addressing things that were. Hold on, guys. Hey, tell him to suck a uh, dick. He, he, tell him to suck yeah. a dick. You're with the Black Pants Legion. You're 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 in a perfectly that's adequate that's YouTube channel. <laughs> that's what they're texting me to tell me. Oh God. So hey, you know you're, they're talking about you on the Black Pants, but yes, because I'm on it. Oh. Oh God. Okay. Good job. Um, the best way to describe this edition is it's 2.5. You know, right. I, I uh, felt that. I And I'm, I'm glad you said that because, okay, remember in 335 when you had these crazy fucking character builds and you were like, oh, man, yeah. I'm going to play a, I'm going to play a macho man, Randy Savage wrestler. And then yeah. you get into gra grappling rules. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, I'm just going to fucking eat a gun. This is horrible. Yeah. I've only seen one RPG do grappling, right? <sighs> but, um, yeah, they, they, they had to fix the problem. You know, they, had, they had to fix the problem a third by going back to the roots. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. They still had to fix the problem with second. Um,. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff about 5th edition I think they could improve. There's a lot of stuff about 5th edition that I that I like. Um, you know, the, their skill system is one of the worst I've seen in D&D. &D. It's better than 3rd. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Because, I mean, 3rd third, third uh, had cool. every skill under the book. Like, oh, I wish to be an armor, blah, 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 blah. And you could make that. But if the setting wasn't built yeah. off that or if the DM wasn't having it, you're fucked. Well, it was also one of my biggest problems is don't tell me what my character wants to take as a gill. Agreed. Third edition was terrible about that. It was like, I'm going to be a charming fighter. Okay, well, uh, you you raise your skills half as much as the rogues. Like, why? Because rogues are good at talking and fighters aren't. The Dread Pirate Roberts begs to differ. Agreed. Absolutely. And that's where I think 3-5 kind of bridged that gap just a little bit with shit like the swashbuckler and so on, where you have yeah. some of those just bridges. just to yeah, I, you're at a cross class school. That's all you got to do. Right, and that's the thing is three five really blurred the lines a bit where it kind of needed to be blurred. But as I'm sure you know, yeah. in three five, you also ended up showing up to a tabletop game, 
and you'd be like, oh, yes, I'm a, I'm a paladin slash champion of Torm. And the guy in the next party is like, oh, I'm a, I'm a Harper uh, agent. And then you had someone who's like, I'm three levels in this and two levels in this and three levels in this and two levels of this and three levels yeah. of this and two levels in this. And just so I can have this one backstory and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, my fucking God. Really? Multiclassing was always a problem with three. Se- you know, fifth edition, it's not a, as big of a deal, but the classes aren't front loaded. They specifically fixed that by saying, it's like, okay, well, you do this, but you don't get all the cool stuff. I absolutely right. agree with that. Yeah. So they fixed that, you know, because, uh, you know, second edition, there was no multiclassing. You know, you go to a dual class and, okay, you, you can't level up in your old one anymore. Um, I think that they need to expand, you know, Gripes for me is their weapon chart is dull. Yeah, it is. Longsword uh, and the battle axe are the exact same weapon, just, uh, mechanically. Right, and I think that they, when they released fifth edition, they overlooked a lot of the fine detail that if if yes. you looked at. The problem with D&D is I find that they often will bulldoze the last session into a dump and never look at it again when they're creating the new new yeah. stuff. Rather than look at the good shit. Like, if you look at the expanded yeah. armory and magic system of 3-5 and then moved into 5th edition, you would say, wow, look at all these options we can yeah. give characters. Rather than, oh, well, let's just wait to splat books. Yeah. Give, you know, you make the law. Was it... Um, a- working on a book and we had a class that modifies weapon properties just so that you could have a difference between a long sword or a battle axe or a trident and a beer or any of the pole arms that are the exact same thing mechanically. It's boring. So, and then they, then they lecture you about, it's like, well, I want a katana. Well, that's just a long sword. Well, a long yeah. sword just a battle axe. No, and um, I, I absolutely agree with that because I, I lived in 3.5 where it's like, oh, well, you know, there's a difference between a fucking halberd and a spear. There's a fucking yeah. difference. And and you have all these neat little quirks. The problem with 3.5, though, to be completely honest, is where someone's like, oh, I'm going to play a, a... What was it? What was very popular for a while? Someone doing... Chain. Yeah, exactly. Fucking spike and chain where you're like, I'm a wizard and I use these and spike and chain. And someone comes in and you just trip everyone constantly. Yes. Yeah. No. Uh, and that's, that's the issue is you end up with these min maxers that are fucking yeah. horrible. Yeah. I, I'll give props to fifth edition. Their background system is wonderful. I wish they would have done that earlier. I agree. Uh, that goes back to my skill. You know, I want to be, you know, a, a threatening wizard. It's like, well, wizards aren't good at social skills, so you have to take a penalty to intimidate. Fucker, I, you know, I ship fireballs and piss lightning. Don't tell me I can't intimidate somebody. Exactly. Now, I, I agree that 5th edition is trying its best, but it's also someone who's new to yeah. the game. It, it, it yeah. really smacks of that in many places. Yeah, and they could use a few more rules you know, grind out the soft spots. Yeah, and I agree with that. Uh, I absolutely agree with that. And open up the rest of the settings so we can actually start playing. Because they promised us, you know, this was going to be like the old days. Well, not everybody plays Forgotten Realms. Well, right. That's, That's the one thing that I wanted to touch on, is in 5th edition, you ended up with... Let's play Forgotten Realms. Well, Forgotten Realms is generic D&D. It's gingerbread. Everyone has played there a thousand times. They know what it's supposed to be. Everyone knows all the fucking DMPC characters that the DMPC is going to use to fucking ruin your game. Yeah. I mean, the last time I ran Forgotten Realms, the first thing I did is have the party watch Dritz choke to death on a chicken bone in the tavern. (laughs) (laughs) Well done. Did anybody, okay, we, we, we save him. Did anybody take medicine? We don't even take medicine skill. We've got the healing kit. Okay, then you watch him die. That's that's fucking great. I, in, in, with the, the issue I have also with Forgotten Realms is there's nothing you can change. You're not going to change the slave markets of Kalimshan. You're not going to change the Red Wizards. You're not going to change the Thieves Guild. You're not going to change the sword coast you're not going to make no. lantan stop making fucking weapons you're not going and there's things i like about Feyron. i love the god system i think the gods fighting each other and shit like that is cool and gods having portfolios and one's subsuming the other i think that's great yeah 
I mean, that was one of the, the beauties of going from to second edition when they went to that with the time of troubles. Yeah, I love that they handled that, to, you know, that the world changes and the material plane has an effect on things. I really like that. Yeah, because that was, of course, the, the time of troubles was probably the best uh, setting to come out of the we nuke the world uh, obsession that TSR got into. Though I could argue that Greyhawk with the let's have Great War, which actually gets all the the nations out of the way, or gets gets it out of their system, but everybody else got kind of screwed over. So I I have to ask you this, sir, and I I, I know that maybe you didn't touch on it as much, but yeah, when I read Eberron and I read the setting of Eberron, I thought two things. The one was, we're forged or cool. Why hasn't anyone thought of this before? Sentient golems are a neat idea because they do have limitations, but they do have some bonuses. Yeah. I like that idea. The number two problem, though, is when magic is so mundane that you have a wizard casting light permanency on fucking light bulbs in a fucking factory all day as part of an assembly line. It ruins the effect of magic. When magic becomes so mundane, it's like turning a faucet. If you do it right, you can, it can, I mean, if it's the setting, I mean, I play Mistara heavily, and there's one of the nations called Glantry, where magic is exactly that, but hmm? everybody hates Glantry. Glantrians hate Glantry. Uh, I think the quote was, the only thing that Glantrians hate more than each other is everyone else. So when you go there, you know, for in Glantry at least, when you go there, it's going to be a massive amount of culture shock. It right. also helped that Glantrians like dissect clerics, dwarves, and halflings uh, because they do. Um, you know, you can have the Magitek. Magitek's not for everybody. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to do it because then it's just, you know, it's like, okay, I just go in there, I spend some gold, and I get my plus one magic sword. Right. And uh, if it's, I, I think that steals some of the magic out of it, some of the questing yeah. aspect of it, seeking out a master who can do these things, right. who may need things yeah. in order to do it. Yeah, I mean, if you... I mean, there's ways to do it. It's one way to do it is just, it's a way to get gold out of this, the, the player character. But, and that's a, that's a problem with 5th edition, is you have nothing to spend money on. I agree with that. I, I love the small items of, well, the, the small baubles, you know, where yeah. someone will mention, someone will mention, say, like, Qual's feather tokens and what have you. And I, I can talk an hour about the fun aspects of those, yeah. but um, it, it's it's odd to see that nowadays that's it's... The wondrous items are like, well, just make a thing and whatever, who cares? And it yeah. saddens me because you're like, ooh, the chastivals of fell power, and they, they have import. Yeah, and it's, again, it's, it depends on the setting because, you know, Eberron, they're trying to make it, or they got tra magic trains. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, so that kind of turns people off. Some people like this, some people don't. Uh, well, the it, the it, issue it's, it's I have better. with. It, in, I, pardon for interrupting, but the, the issue I have with Amberon no. is where they say, oh, we have magic trains. And I'm like, oh, cool. So this is a world that's been touched by mass industrialization. No. Well, they have mass transit. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it's not amazing. well thought out. It's, it's just, well, they have trains. No. You can go anywhere. And I'm like, oh, so the world, the culture is all certainly globalist now. No. Yeah. Well, why not? Well, where's the, my giant empires? Well, there isn't one. Well, they have mass transit. Why wouldn't someone with the best army have smashed everyone by now? Yeah. Oh, well, they all get along. Bullshit. You know, it's 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 just a lot of... Ugh. Going back to um, the Iron Kingdoms, that was one of the biggest complaints that uh, the nation of Signar had invented the, tele the telegram and yet was getting smashed uh, repeatedly. Uh, by the uh, the other militaries, despite having being the only one with instant mass or uh, instant uh, communication across, you know, a long distance. No, I I absolutely agree with that. When your competitor is using optical semaphore and you have and, instantaneous communication, you yeah. should be kicking the shit out of them. Yeah, and it's like 
the um, I keep going back to Glantry, but I, again, I run the Mistara channel. You know, the Glantrians have all this magic tech. The problem is everyone hates them. So they stay in their, their nation, which is extremely well defended because it's be in, be, behind mountain passes. But if anybody go in there, they get slaughtered. But the Glantrians don't go out because then they lose all of their advantages. Well, right. Uh, I mean, and, you, you have cultural contamination. If, if you have something like a bolt-action rifle and you go out into a world of flintlocks, yeah. if you die, if you lose one guy to anything, if you lose one yeah. guy to anything... You're gonna, you're gonna end up with that rifle out there potentially being reverse engineered. And true, they right. may not be able to reverse engineer it perfectly. They may make a crude, uh, you know, close enough. There may yeah. be one tenth of its effectiveness, but it's a light year advance for them. Well, I guess the other thing you have to worry about, when, and the reverse of the coin is when you have the culture, the uh, culturally stagnant uh, worlds where nothing changes. And it's like, seriously, nothing. And it's actually in the star. They've actually got one nation, which is based on the Republic of Texas, complete with guns. Yeah. But they actually lock them in place mechanically. And so, yeah, you can go there and you get, you know, their, techno their technology is 300 years ahead of everybody else. But if they leave, they get sick and die. Which is hilarious and terrible, but hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's part Red Curse, which is one of the second edition. The only thing good for that setting that came out of second edition. So what do you think is the worst tabletop setting? But like in, oh. in terms of D&D, &D, just D&D &D straight. Oh, and mechanically, it was Spelljammer. Everybody loves it for the nostalgia, but the rules were crap. Uh, yeah, I, I remember the Spelljammer games was wow. just going over to the Bohemian kid's house, smoking some weed and talking about how great Spelljammer was, but never doing yeah. it, doing anything. Yeah. There's a reason why it's the sh it was the shortest lived setting. Okay, yeah. next next question. Let's talk about Numenera, about how okay. hyped it was and how empty it was. Um, oh, I mean, Numenera, okay, again, pretty, but hollow. Um... The thing is, is my players are get, sitting down there and you've got the, the jacks and you've got the glaives and you've got the nanos and the nanos are, okay, so what are your powers? Like, I'm good at sneaking. I'm good at fighting. I control nanotechnology. Okay. Um, why doesn't everybody want to be him? Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, I control the fabric of reality. Uh, okay. Well, that's a little better than the guy who punches people. Yeah. You know, the, or what was it? like, what, what's your thing? It's like, I, I, you know, like I shoot a good bow and what's your uh, specialty? You know, it's like, I, you know, I can fight with two weapons. What do you do? I control gravity. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay, going to um, once again, opt with a guy who can control reality. I, I, I think that's going to be a little, yeah. a little uh, better. Again, pretty. Okay. I guess the, the best way somebody described it was it's very pretty and very hollow. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're in this area. You're in this era of. I don't. I haven't read. I haven't seen the new edition. I don't know it's out yet. Mm. The my players gave up after I think two adventures because they got bored in a setting that was just fantastically written. Um, because you're dealing with all this super technology and you just cannot do anything with it. You know when you're you're standing next in the shadow of a walking sentient battleship. And you've got flying, you know, jets overhead that you don't, that never need to land. And the best weapon you can start with is a crossbow longsword. Yeah, that's bullshit. I agree. Uh, you weren't, you know, they, well, they're, they're not interested in their history. Why not? Who are you to make that decision? Well, right. I mean, if a character wants to conduct archaeology and dig through why, what, what the fuck, why is this, why is that, why not, well, what if I could do blah? And you say, no, yeah. it is what it is. Fuck off. Don't touch it. That ruins it. Yeah. So I, here, I killed, you know, I killed the, no, go killed ahead. the alien with the gun. And it's like, okay, I want to, like you said, I want to take that gun and reverse engineer it. Well, you don't want to do that because you're just not interested in that. Yeah, that's insane. I, it, yeah, it, yeah exactly. Yeah. So someone asks, like the, uh, um, no, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, I, I was saying, yes, go ahead. All right. Um, someone asking about the 3035 rules for oriental adventures that introduced Legend of the Five Rings but left us clueless on what was going east, uh, going on in Far East Faerun. 
Yeah, that was uh, with the Rokugan. Yeah, they got that. That was partly because they had the uh, they kind of crossed over with the guys that did uh, L five R, and then apparently there was some sort of licensing problem. That was the problem with it because too many cooks trying to write that one at the same time. Yeah. So, okay, here's my question. What is your stance on Legend of the Five Rings? I played it twice. It's fucking hilarious. Hey, I, I find it uh, mainly as hilarious, but I know people who only play that and are very serious into that. Uh, it's some, Well, it's the same vein as Seventh Sea, and I'm not not really big into Japanese culture. Granted, I love Kurosawa movies, so I'm of course. a credit on that one. Kurosawa. Um... The, you know, it's, it's got a well-done storyline up until a certain point, which I don't remember exactly where everybody just threw their hands up because there were too many damn factions. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, the the roll-and-keep dice mechanics had, you know, they had their good parts, but they didn't work it out. Um, you know, if, if you wanted to play Samurai and Ninja and Gaijin and all of that, or no, Gaijin, uh, Geisha, it's a fantastic setting. But it's a setting where the the rules and the mechanics are written just to work in that setting. Um, so it's like Deadlands, where you've got a great rule setting as long as you play with the setting that was built for it. Yeah. If you step outside of it or you try to alter it, it's going to fail because it's not meant to be modified or uh, reapplied anywhere else. I agree. So here's another question, a private answer. Someone asked if they could PM questions to ask Mr. Welch. Uh, <laughs> they're like, ask Welch. Um, yeah. Here is, uh, there is a great setting that I saw on a show that I think would go great in a and d setting, one that has industrialization and the rulers an all-powerful mage. The show is called Nomad of Nowhere. The king has an artifact that allows him to literally consume the magic of other mages. The king has declared that all magic save his is evil. Da, 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 da. My question is, how fun would a campaign based on the preface be? One that magic users would have to hide their powers lest they be captured and sacrificed to the king. So like the Dark Crystal with the Gelflings? Yeah, it kind of feels like that. Yeah. The, the other question oh. is something like that also seems like 40k where it's like, oh, you're a that's psych, a, you know, and then, you know, Emperor yeah, needs that, some that's lunch. That's a very common... That's a, that's a very common, uh, at least with fantasy novels and a lot of sci-fi novels, where you are a special class and they need you for that class because you're better as a resource than an actual person. It in, and it can work if it's if it's written well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of my other users has said, "Sounds like Dark Sun," which where you know you've imperiled the Earth by casting magic, and everyone's yeah. going to use that magic because it's really powerful. You yeah, know. and. Uh, you know, if it's if it's written, if a story's a story. If the story's written well, it's good. If the story's written badly, it's going to suck. Well, of course. I mean, it. Yeah, That's true. it's true. I mean, um, you, no, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say, if you take the story of the, the monster hunting down the people in the enclosed environment. If you do it well, you get alien. If you do it badly, you get Deep Star Six. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th there's only so many people that can rise to the top, obviously. So, what is... Yeah. There's so many RPGs that come out. What What are your feelings on Fantasy Flight's take on Star Wars? I, I forget what they've called it. I've only... Oh, yeah. Um, again, I was spoiled by D6. It was better than uh, the D20. Hmm. Um, it does have the problem with it has the Jedi problem that a lot of them have. Well, yeah, the Jedi are just better. Well, that uh, was the no. issue I had with Star Wars D twenty is that I have one of the Star Wars D twenty books, and the Jedi are way better at everything. But what's sad is that his lightsaber does fucking nothing. It's because it's D twenty, so it's like a lightsaber yeah. is is not really all that much more powerful than anything else. So. That's what I liked about uh, was it the D the way D six handled it was the lightsaber did twice as much damage as the heaviest uh, weapon or the heaviest thing that the heaviest laser blaster your party carry, but the skill to use it cost triple everything else in addition to all the force powers. I like that idea. So, yeah, yeah. So anybody can pick up a lightsaber, but uh, 
if you don't know how to use it and using it is very difficult, uh, you're probably going to cut something off of somebody you like. Right, 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 right. So one thing I've noticed in your videos is you really like the idea of high lethality. I love the idea of high lethality systems where a player who plays a game just get fucking murdered because, well, they exist. Yeah, it depends on the system. Most games, because it's the risk that's that it's the risk of dying, was what makes most games fun. Like I said, with the uh, seventh C second edition, there was no risk. Fair, um, yeah. If you were playing seventh C first edition, which is very death adverse, uh, but it was still fun because you didn't know whether you were going to succeed or not, and the penalty for failure was often worse than death. Um, if you're playing in a game like Twilight 2000, where you know you should be, you know, always worried about death or Cyberpunk or Shadowrun. Uh, if you take away the fear of death, the game loses its teeth. I agree. Um, fifth, fifth edition has the problem where it's really hard to die unless the dungeon master goes out of his way, and when he does go out of his way, it's uh, it, it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths because you're singling somebody out. Granted, you take the wizard down, and then for a bonus action, I stab you again. Your wizard's dead. Um, but the the uh, the flip side of that, it's so hard to die because I knock your guy down. And I just okay, as I have a I have a healing kit. You're okay. We'll, you know, we'll get some we'll get some, we'll get some hit points to you in a second. Uh, again, it depends on the genre. If you're playing 40k, yeah, absolutely. Um, what do we have? The guy that we had to take his multi melt away because it made the game too damn easy. What if he got hit with it? He was dead plus 40, 10 points of damage. He, that's the one thing that I love about fucking multi melt is, is um, I, I had DMs punish us for using them because they'd be like, oh, it's a fucking multi melt. I make walls go away. And it's like, okay. And then yeah. we wait until the DM would sucker us into using it until, uh, oh, yeah, you uh, dissolved a propane tank. Yeah. Oh, the multi melt was great. It was so broken. Oh, of um, course. I mean, when you're talking like um, penetration twelve plus numbers, yes, and and it's like, oh yeah, you could you could absolutely annihilate anything in the game. But let's say yeah. that you're in a starship, you ate the hull. Well, do you have a space? No, you die. The end. Yeah. Yeah, that was. You know, so yeah, it, the lethality depends on the system. You don't have a high lethality superhero game that defeats the purpose, unless you're playing Watchmen. Okay, so here's a question. Um, yeah. Taya527 wanted to ask about Al Qadim from D&D. &D. It's a setting. Oh, yeah, the Forgotten more... Realms Desert setting. Yeah. What do you know about it? Uh, just what I read. Uh, they tried to. Re they really tried to capture the second edition. They re That's how long ago I read it. Uh, really tried to capture the. Well, I guess where they started off with Pharaoh or the Lost City. Um, they. Did a decent job. Uh, there's parts of it, especially with the when they were trying to mimic the cultures that would not fly today in today's environment. Oh, of course. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a decent setting. It was one of the better ones. Uh, I, I liked it better than Chult or uh, their their Mastika adventures because you know it's you know Aladdin and I grew up, I grew up watching Sinbad. Oh yeah. The, Harry Housen, not the comedian. Yeah, I was gonna say like, please, please don't say the comedian because that's just gonna be weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Oh, I'm trying to remember a lot about it. It's been a while since I read that. Is the setting? I, it's not a Forgotten Realms is not a setting I, I played a lot in. Well, that and Forgotten Realms had a flavor uh, for every month of the week, and they were all the yes, same. Yeah, it I was like, it, it, it's the kitchen sink. It's it's the kitchen sink setting. Everything's in Forgotten Realms. If it's not in Forgotten Realms, just wait. They haven't acted it yet. So someone had a question for both of us, and that was, uh, what do you think about the latest version of the Mech Warrior system, A Time of War? And they acknowledge that I hate modern battle tech, but that's a different story. I'll be honest, I stopped kind of paying attention after clicky tech. Thank fucking Christ, we're on the same page. I, I, yeah. I think the setting ended in 3067, because then Fassa was like, I'm out! And they punched out, and they left. Yeah. And they... <laughs> my money going home. Right. And, and they closed while they were still solvent. And then it sold to FanPro, and then it sold to WizKids, and then 
whoever yeah. and and ended up getting really weird because they took it to the fedcom civil war to the jihad yeah. and then they yeah. took it to way far future and they were like it's a dark age and it's yeah. they're just looking for things that were early battle tech was like game of thrones and stompy robots and very feudalistic and crazy and there were layers of all these internecine plots and Machiavellian schemes and all this balance of power and all these crazy things. And then the, when it went to the jihad, they were like, what if AT&T wanted to take all the money? And it was just, yeah. what's going on? Well, they had the click tech license and they didn't, there uh, was it, the Mage Knight was dying and they hadn't come up with hero clicks yet. So they thought, hey. I think the best part about uh, Clicky Tech was the fact that I was able to pry all the tanks off and give it to my nephews for next to nothing after it died. Yeah. And he had a blast playing tank wars. That's, that's the thing, though, is that it was... It was banned sloppy writing, and they decided to more or less just shit on their universe. Yeah, I mean, it didn't I mean it, it was a fossil product. You look at Shadowrun with the way they kept their their line fresh by new ideas in the in the meta game. Right. BattleTech just ignored all of that. You don't. That's the problem with a lot of the meta game. If you want to have your product last forever, and this applies to a lot of stuff that I've ranted about in the past, don't drop a nuke on your setting. Yeah, exactly. Keep it alive, move it forward, change some things. Some people die, some people live. This plot paid off, this plot didn't. These people marry, these people divorce, these people got yeah. murdered. But move it forward. Yeah, and it was like, I didn't expect, was it Natasha Kerensky to live forever? And they got, you know, they, they did her off on a nice way, but I was expecting that because they were advancing the plot. And right. then it's like, okay, uh, the, the network goes down, everybody goes absolutely batshit. Um, and it's just, yeah, you don't, you must never nuke your meta plot, even if it's there to do sales, because you're going to, the people who are there for the concept are going to leave when you blow up the concept. Right. And that you're was gonna, the more people you're going to add. Well, that was the one thing that drove me nuts. That was the one thing that drove me nuts is if you look at through all the battle tech stuff, you see where they're going. Uh, people were going to Battletech conventions. They got invited to the uh, Katrina Steiner and uh, Hans Davion marriage and all of these other things. It was all about politics and politicking and royal houses and everything else. And then you get that Michael Bay treatment of, and then I blow the setting up. And you go, oh, well, son of a bitch. Yeah. And it's. Yeah, you don't nuke your meta plot. I mean, also, don't play with the Battletech players I did because they drove everybody into car wars. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So another question from one of the fans is, uh, what about us Exalted? Oh, the, the uh, anime game uh, from White Wolf. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't care for it. I, I'm, I don't like anime, and it, it came off way too much as anime to me. Nice. Uh, just again, not not really big into the Japanese stuff unless it's a Kurosawa. Right. Uh, you know, it's like it's it's just a superhero game. It's as a kung fu superhero game. That's what it came across to me as. Fair. So here is another question, and I think this is valid. I've I've considered this a few times, but I played a lot of Shadowrun. But what the fuck yeah. about Earth Dawn? Do you know anyone who actually played it? Uh. When it first came out, yeah, I knew a few people. Um, you know, it was support just wasn't there. It was it was out during one of the heydays of D and D. You know, you're you're trying to you're trying to play under the the 500 pound gorilla in the room. I mean, they seem to like it. I, I've I thumbed through it, but uh, it's like trying to play Pin Dragon. Everybody plays D and D, and everybody else all fantasy games are just a cheap rip off of it. No, Except I, Talos Lanta, those guys uh, have their middle fingers up all the time about D uh, D and D. I agree, I agree. Anyways, it's, it's way past my bedtime, and I really thank you for joining me, sir. And I, th there's like eight thousand links to your fucking channel, and I oh, wunderbar. Oh yeah, das ist wunderbar. Yeah. And I, I I think that you're going to have um, a a bunch of really great people visiting, and people who view the stream are absolutely invited to go find Mr. Welch's man musing. 
and great. I, I mean, I gotta come out and do a riffs video that I've been dodging. Listen, <laughs> you do what I do, which is fucking yeah. suck it up, take a drink, and write some shit, yeah. and I think you'll get through it. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been a wonderful stream, and I, I really appreciate you guys, and oh. it's amazing we've made it this far. Mr. Welch, thank you for being my guest. Well, if you ever need me on again, let me know, because I have a lot to talk about. Edition was a board game. Correct. It, it, it shoots and lambers meets D&D. &D. <laughs>